going to give you some more inspiration because we um, have been joined by one Mr. Kurgat Kipkirui, who is um, an entrepreneur. He's doing great. Uh, he has a travel company called Tare Adventures. Apart from that, he's a HR consultant and also an IT professional. Welcome, Mr. Kurgat. Thank you, Stephanie. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. All right, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I've mentioned the titles, but anything else you want to add? Sure, sure. Thanks to meet you, and it's a pleasure to meet you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you have actually introduced, my name is Kolgat Kipkirui. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a father, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I am an entrepreneur, HR consultant, and uh, also an IT professional. I actually, currently, I, I deal with entrepreneurship that is uh, running my own company that is Tari Adventures, tours and travel company where we deal with uh, mm -hmm. travel. Okay. Yeah, sure. Interesting. So now are you doing all of, you're, you're f uh, currently now you're just focusing on entrepreneurship or you're still practicing consultancy on the side and uh, IT? No, for now I only practice entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. At some point, uh, when I have clients, I just do the HR consultancy. But for now, I'm fully in uh, entrepreneurship where I run my own company. All right. Tell yeah. us about Tari Adventures. When did it start? What was the inspiration behind it? Tari Adventures started like a year ago. And we have actually, like for the last six months, we've actually worked on uh, actually improving our services because we started initially a year ago mm -hmm. then we came we faced some challenges it was like uh, there is a stop on the way but as we we moved on like after six months eh, the first six months was not something easy then six months up to to date now mm -hmm. that's where that uh, we picked up and uh, mm -hmm. we actually getting clients and uh, having them travel for the tours all those things travel to different destinations within kenya and outside kenya Wow. Yeah. I think I, I'll ask you later on about the, some of the challenges that you faced uh, because I, I believe in any business you're bound to get challenges. Yeah. So now, uh, what was your inspiration behind uh, Tari Adventures? Why did you start? I started Tari Adventures because I saw that there was a gap in the market mm -hmm. and I actually wanted to fill this gap because through my various uh, experiences, meeting different people, working with different races of people, I actually encountered the urge of satisfying people through traveling because it, previously I had actually met uh, met people who wanted to travel to different destinations, but they were not like they never had maybe the connections or mm -hmm. the ways or the process on how to get it, and they actually had this idea that traveling is something very expensive. So I became motivated and actually. Mm -hmm say that what I'm going to do, I'll come up with a plan, satisfy these middle people because traveling was like, uh, it's only made for the top, top class. So I actually had to do my research, uh, study, and ensure that uh, I actually came up with an idea that could actually fit everyone and a plan for every person who, who intends to travel mm -hmm. and visit the country. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I like that. Maybe you can share, because for many people, when you think about traveling, going to coast and uh, getting a tourist company, you're like, no, <laughs> that will cost <laughs> me a fortune. Yeah. But you're saying now you brought that down to the level of uh, the common man, 90s, someone in the middle class mm -hmm. who wants to, you know, to travel around. How, how are you doing that? For someone who wants to go to maybe, let's say, Mombasa, you know, for a holiday, mm -hmm. how, what is it, how much are they likely to spend, um, yeah, you know, in uh, your tours company, uh, different from how they spend when they just want to go alone and, you know, pay for everything by themselves. Sure. Thanks, Stephanie. Now, what we do, we normally share with our clients. Uh, once we get a, any client, we share mm -hmm. with them uh, our offers, what we provide, our rates. Then we actually ask uh, our customers, mm -hmm. what is your budget? the budget that uh, they they have for okay. these for traveling so everybody has got different budget so we sit down and we give them uh, options on where they prefer their destinations if it's south coast if it's malindi it's watamu we work with you as a client step by step so that we fit your budget so that we don't give you high end hotels or 
we strain your budget. So okay. we work with you the whole journey and ensure that in every step, Mm -hmm. You don't overspend when you're going to your holidays. And we give you, if you want to go to South Coast, we have an option of, uh, or anywhere in Kenya, we have an option of either you can fly or you can use SGR or any other so that we ensure that you're well fitted and uh, streamlined to your budget. Okay, yeah. so you work according to anyone's budget. Yes. So 20,000 can get you to coast and back. Yeah, it will, it will, definitely it will. Wow. It will yeah, it will take you, then we, we, you can, we can have three, Three days, two nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can link you with uh, you go through SGR, then back all the way to South Coast, or you can fly depending on the rates. And normally, what we normally tell our clients is that uh, mm -hmm. it's good to plan early. Don't plan, uh, and uh, maybe you want to go to Coast next week and you're giving us the, the notice now, or maybe you're engaging us now, because that one will basically tell us that uh, you'll mm -hmm. maybe the prices will go high because the time limit is uh, mm -hmm. actually Two. less. Yeah, so we actually need to have more time so that we plan and get favor favorable rates. Okay, yeah. so do you say that it's more, um, it's better for the client to plan with a tour company other than just traveling alone and trying to manage the whole uh, holiday expense on their own? Yeah, sure. Planning with the travel company is something very interesting and uh, will actually give you support because, for example, Stephanie, if mm -hmm. you say that you're traveling alone to maybe wherever you want to travel in Kenya, mm -hmm. there are those instances that you will meet, maybe you don't know where to go, the scen sceneries that you want to experience, all those things. So the best thing to do is that you choose uh, your preferred travel company. That's where that because already we have connections with all those people who are offering those services. Okay. So the best thing is mm -hmm. that uh, you just settle with a travel agency and uh, we'll organize everything. So for you, it's only your presence. You, of course, make your payments, then you travel. You and travel stress-free, basically. Stress sure, that's the uh, word. Thank amazing. You. Mm. And when you said, you said that this, uh, your inspiration was that you saw a gap in this area so do you think that there's opportunities for others who want to venture into uh you know the, uh, to be entrepreneurs in tours and travel uh, have a company like Terry adventures yeah there is a quite opportunity actually when you talk of uh, when i saw the gap in the market mm -hmm. the other thing was that uh, I actually wanted to assist uh, fellow entrepreneurs because they are people who have the ideas. They have all what it takes to become an entrepreneur, maybe not actually into the travel and tours. Maybe they just want to improve. For example, when we are doing our posters, we're doing everything. They are those people, they have the potential, but they don't have the platform. Mm -hmm. So that's why when uh, as a person, when I work running my own uh, company, Tari Adventures, they are those people who I know they have the potential to do one, two, three mm -hmm. things. Eh? So that's why I go with them step by step and I, all the services that I need, I also grow them slow by slow. So that's why I also give them and um, ensure that they are, their enter entrepreneurship skills are actually felt and they exercise them because some people, mm -hmm. when you meet them, you see that they're just there, they're just like, they don't want to exercise their powers or their skills. Okay. Yeah, knowledge, yeah. So that's why I actually work with also young entrepreneurs. So you meant uh, young entrepreneurs? Sure. Okay, and how is that going so far? Have you, have they met steps? Are you seeing any good progress? Yes, actually they have made a huge step and actually we are like on the same, uh, actually on the same level now and we also encourage each other because through what I do, I mm -hmm. do good work, everything. I have never disappointed my clients. So once I do, even when I'm running my ads, maybe when I'm running my posters, everything, I have my friends. So at the end of the day, I love to refer these, uh, my clients to, to them. So they also grow yeah. slow by slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's something because I have like uh, three, four guys eh, who have actually made huge strides. Wow, because of amazing. That, yeah. Yeah. That's quite uh, nice of you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, tell us a little bit about the challenges that you faced when you started the business. The six months you said were very hard, and mm -hmm. then uh, six months on, you've been picking up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Stephanie, it's really challenging. Of course, the first thing is about finances. <laughs> finances <I bet>. is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a new thing. It's, a yeah, it's, it's like it's a baby actually, now. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. pulling, 
all those finances together everything it's 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 really a challenge for for an entrepreneur you actually need to find a way work with a budget mm -hmm. and uh, try try it slow by slow the other thing uh, before you go to the other thing yes yes uh, most startups at least complain about finances so much and they say uh, you know it's like a baby just keep on feeding you don't really get uh, the returns on it yeah. but it's growing so you're just feeding on it you might be paying everyone apart from yourself mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. you know you're getting money from your job and you're taking it all to your business you're barely having enough for yourself you know mm -hmm. is it the same case was it the same case for you yeah it was it was because at some point you get to have money you pay like everybody and at the end of the day when you see your margin it's quite low so it's like uh, you're doing nothing but yeah. of course those are the initial initial stages initial so days, uh, so at the end of the day you just must sacrifice and you know my focus what's my focus what am i actually aiming at at the end of the day mm -hmm. so if you're not making any losses but at some point you'll have to make uh, quite small losses because uh, mm -hmm. yeah when we were starting like for the first six months it was uh, challenging so in terms of finances it's a real thing you just have to work with your budget work, work with your, your budget. budget yeah All right. yeah and don't compare yourself with others mm -hmm. or other people because many people are in the industry different uh, skills different knowledge and different backgrounds so just go with your lane and uh, of course move with your own speed in terms of finances don't if you're doing the adverts don't go to maybe those adverts that are charging more Mm. Okay. So just go slow by slow. Okay. So that was the finances. The other thing I know when uh, doing that, someone overworks. As you a, overwork. You overwork mm. because uh, you deal with many people. You deal with many projects. And you know at the end of the day, it's a stressful thing. I, ca I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Of course, the other thing again is that at the end of the day, you struggle to get customers. You mm. you're struggling because to get customers. It's a new company. Yes. Uh, you need to have you need you are trying to establish trust yes. Yes. with customers. <laughs> yeah. So how was that? So the challenge or the main thing I can advise anyone who wants to venture into entrepreneurship is that you always keep your customers and ensure that you listen to them because getting those customers, when you get it right and you keep that uh, one customer they'll make referrals mm -hmm. and they'll also link you to other people so that's why you grow you grow don't get one customer then you lose losing make sure customer, you keep that yes, customer the follow them do those phone calls do those emails and ensure that they are satisfied mm -hmm. get the feedbacks everything that that will get you moving from wow. one step to another mm -hmm. yeah sure. uh, is it uh do you also go with the policy or the mantra that the customer is always right yeah, yeah. You, you have to to ensure that the customer is always right. But at the end of the day, you show them that they are right. But there is a platform that you will come and uh, settle on one thing. Maybe if they are going wrong, of course, there is a way that you will just uh, sit down mm. and ensure that uh, you can communicate and ensure that they are doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are just actually working with them instead of uh, having them maybe they have mm -hmm. the autonomy of controlling you you know that will be uh, that that won't be good but they are always right show them that they are always right okay yeah all right any other challenge yeah the other challenge is uh, your audience eh? the lack of audience because sometimes eh, mm -hmm. when uh, let's say you have these uh, one client or two clients mm -hmm. you d you have the intention of reaching out to more clients so you have you actually have to ensure that uh, you reach more audience so being an entrepreneur you know you will have the skills every all the concept everything but mm -hmm. now being stressful overworking everything maybe every you've gotten everything right but now having your audience is also a big challenge to our entrepreneur so you have so you need to, to have by your audience you, mean you need to have your niche the people that you are targeting yes okay. the people you are targeting yeah because maybe you can have maybe it's not an online client or maybe it's someone a referral from uh, from a friend mm -hmm. so the other thing maybe you will be having one or two and maybe this person is in a remote area or something so actually you have to maybe cover more or reach more people so being a startup 
business, mm. you actually have to struggle and ensure that you reach into more audience. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges yes, that yes. that you went through. So how did you work through? Did you have you finally managed to deal with all that? Are there some that you're still dealing with? Mm -hmm. Is it better now? Yeah, I can say for now it's better. It's moving on well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I actually had to overcome the fears, have that confidence and uh, say that mm -hmm. what I want, I want to do this thing. And uh, if uh, it's going, it's my real thing. And I also had to understand my why is eh? Why I just have to sit down, question myself, am I doing this right? Is it right or am I going wrong? And uh, at the end of the day, what actually made me come back to maybe the good, the way I'm running the business now is that I also had to seek professional guidance from those people who are thriving in the industry. Mm -hmm. So that's why I get the guide. Because at some point, uh, you as an entrepreneur, you can uh, actually start something, you get frustrated at the end of the day. You give up. You give up and say, ah, let me try something else. Maybe, you see. So not all businesses that are starting end up successful. So it's really challenging. So having having that, of course, having the confidence and uh, overcoming the fears that I had, seeking those professional guidance has really helped me sail through. And uh, I'm actually, or we are actually doing doing good as of now. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And w has it been a challenge? Um, the big. Uh, tours and travel companies in Kenya, countering them, or are you just in your own space? Do you have a different target audience from, from theirs? Yes, thanks, Stephanie, for that. Uh, when I started, I actually say the best thing to do is uh, you follow your own lane. Mm -hmm. So those, the big companies, you know, you know them, they are actually famous. Yeah. So if we actually made a mistake of comparing ourselves to the big companies, it will have actually costed us or maybe you could have at the end of the day you lose hope so we actually go with our own speed go with our own lens and of course we do background checks we see what they are doing at the end we just compare ourselves how are we doing how are they doing and we borrow some ideas even through maybe reading books all those yeah. things and doing research everything Just so they're actually there to actually motivate us and uh, keep us going Wow, amazing. Yeah, sure. yeah. All right. Yeah. How does your day-to-day -day routine look like? Give us a picture, paint us a picture of that. Okay, my day starts very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wake up at around 4.15, uh, 4.15 okay. in the morning, do some workouts. Mm -hmm. About 4.30, then uh, prepare, prepare for work. So majorly, we do na, an hybrid uh, system of running our office. So you can either go physically or we do it remotely. Oh, in the Yeah, okay. yeah. So basically when I'm going to the office by six, I've left the house, go to the office. From there, I just check my emails, mm -hmm. uh, check everything, if there are meetings, everything, then I just prioritize what is there and ensure that I attend to the meetings, the first meetings or the first response based on the agency of the meetings are actually attended to and all the clients because this way you deal with different clients so you must ensure that you satisfy your clients you attend to those meetings and ensure that they are fully comfortable and you give timely responses to them so that's what i do between that is 8 30 in the morning and 10 30. Mm -hmm. yeah so from there now if going to the meetings everything go for my lunch then in the afternoon i just set up some if it's a follow-up meetings in the afternoon all those things so that i get ready for tomorrow then by four by four i'm done you're done i'm done okay. by four then go back to my place mm -hmm. yeah of course going back to my place at the end of the day you have again to plan yourself refresh and do some readings one two at least mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, you are up to date with what, what, what is happening yeah moving. yeah yeah, sure. All right. Mm -hmm. I've asked that question because I <laughs> want to see how a day in an entrepreneur's life looks like. Because yeah. when you're employed, you're, yeah. you know, you're just going to work for your employer mm -hmm. and all that. But mm -hmm. still, even as an entrepreneur, it's your business. People might think, ah, you, need, you can sleep till 10 because <laughs> you have people working for you no. at the end of the day. Yeah. But you actually wake up that early yeah. and start, you start your day at 4 in the morning. So that's quite early to yeah. make sure, you know, yeah. you're up to, you know, uh, standard and, you know, set for the day's work. Yeah, sure. 
right. Yeah, because maybe what I can add to that, uh, Stephanie, is that uh, mm -hmm. most people think that when you are an, an, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. it's like like most youths wake up like thinking of you're waking up at uh, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Because at the end of the day, you will have that work-life autonomy. You see, you mm -hmm. decide what you want to do. Yes, but it's yours anyway. Uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, we normally say the grass isn't green on the other side because <laughs> maybe <laughs> some yeah. people, when uh, they're employed, they can say that uh, of course they are looking for more greener pastures, and they go there, find everything is working. But as an entrepreneur. Grass is never green on the other side. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You have to work hard and <laughs> see, <laughs> <Okay>. see, <laughs> work out uh -huh. and get the right results. Yeah. yeah. So don't, don't, don't. Once you mm -hmm. ensure that uh, you're sleeping or you're doing something, you're just getting lazy. You're making losses at the end of the day. Okay. Trust me. So yeah. you need to work <laughs> almost twice as harder yeah. than any other person. You're running your business, so you have to <laughs> <laughs> give it all. Yeah, sure. All right. And what is the place of you know leadership? Because now you are the CEO of mm -hmm. it, and you have people behind you. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that uh, you're leading right? Mm -hmm. So normally we normally have the planning planning met met methods, the SMART and the SWOT analysis that we ensure that. Mm -hmm. uh, our, like my team, we are working together and ensuring that uh, with the marketing, with the logistics, that we are doing everything right. And mm -hmm. the other thing is that we do constant uh, meetings with them and ensure that uh, in case there is something we follow up, because this is a sensitive part where we deal with, uh, with clients. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, dealing with clients is really a challenging thing and very sensitive because one, my team goes wrong Mm -hmm. it will mess up the whole thing. We can end up losing the, all the clients. Yeah. So the most important thing is that we do the follow-up meetings. Mm -hmm. We raise concerns whenever they come up. So the most important thing, we prioritize and ensure that uh, everything that happens is actually dealt with accordingly. And uh, we normally have the policy of saying customer first, others follows. Okay. So having those constant meetings, constant reminders makes us moving from one step to the other. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And what is unique about your different your business from any other? The unique thing, Stephanie, is that we have uh, unique selling points eh, to our to our customers. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started explaining, is that. Uh, we, we work with the clients based on, on their budget and that's, that ensures us that we reach out to the common Mwananchi mm. and we sell to them our products and services. So instead of maybe the client getting the content or the package from the website or online thing like all the ads, Facebook, all those things, eh, we actually ensure that uh, we follow through the clients because we, when we are dealing with marketing, our marketing staff or all those people, we ensure that we work with them and they work with our clients so that in every aspect uh, of life or maybe any engagement, we ensure that uh, we just go slow by slow and ensure that they understand the product and service. Because what I have actually understood in this industry is that uh, most people actually complain that you're given a package, mm -hmm. let's say you're paying for 20,000, you're paying for 25,000. Yeah. Then at the end of the day, the services you're given are poor. So it's like a fraud. So we mm. actually don't want to have those clients or maybe have people think of uh, like it's a fraudulent exercise or something. So okay. we ensure that we have that unique selling point. And actually we ensure that uh, we do customer follow-ups, getting their feedbacks. Wherever we've gone, maybe for a trip, everything, we actually encourage them to give us reviews, mm -hmm. their feedback responses. You All know, right. getting that will get, get us moving and improve on our skills and everything. And we try much harder to ensure that uh, wherever we link our clients to a different, maybe it's a different hotel, wherever in Kenya, we ensure that uh, we actually do that background check with the hotel, everything, and ensure that all the facilities are okay. Even sometimes we have to, because we have uh, our staff maybe in different stations, like we have someone in Mombasa, all those things. So if we are visiting or our clients are visiting a, a different facility, we ensure that we just visit there prior to 
our visitor may be going there so that we see maybe the room allocations, everything. everything. Is in check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's help us that uh, mm -hmm. our unique thing that we do so that okay. we go beyond the borders and ensure that we make sure that once our clients are there, they feel comfortable and again they'll ensure that they give us more referrals at the end of the day. Wow, so yeah. they get value for the money and Correct. then you uh, in turn make a uh, good, uh, you know, um, business sure. on your side. So sure. where, wh how would you say your business is now from where you started and looking into the future? Where do you see yourself five to ten years mm -hmm. to come? Yeah, for now I can say at least we generate more, more revenue. Mm -hmm. And again, at least we've actually learned uh, the people skills eh? like we know you, you know before you uh, you venture into any entrepreneurship or something eh? you think maybe everybody works uh, works the same as you or people mm -hmm. are unique so as a business now where we are we have actually learned how people how people behave all those things the way we handle them mm -hmm. because initially we could lose a client because uh, maybe the approach we were we were going wrong on the approach okay. because now maybe someone in the marketing you know they are different people they are the way they express themselves how they deal with that so initially we were actually going wrong maybe getting getting it wrong but for now we are actually having more customers and we know how to deal with different customers mm -hmm. at the end of the day okay yeah. and where do you see yourself five five ten years to come Five, ten years to come, we actually want to, to have grown, go mm -hmm. to, east, uh, like talking of, we are actually based in Kenya, but we actually want to move forward to Eastern Africa, have a branch in Uganda, Tanzania, mm -hmm. all those, and ensure that yeah. we get, we create more market and a more brand, getting our brand go further than only having it in Kenya. So we want to grow and uh, ensure that uh, we grow other because apart from us growing mm -hmm. as Atari Adventures, we also want to grow other entrepreneurs. Wow. Yeah, we want to grow them and ensure that they have those skills, we exercise the skills that we have, everything, so that at the end of the day, everybody is successful. We don't want to be mean because most of the entrepreneurs are like, they only want to satisfy themselves and leave others. So we want to travel step by step, step by step with others and actually grow. Mm -hmm. generate more revenue because money is never enough and uh, we actually want to grow you want mm -hmm. to improve people's skills wow. gain more knowledge all mm -hmm. those things yeah amazing yeah. now that you've said uh, I was talking about growing to uh, other countries and setting up bases there do you travel do you uh, if someone wants to travel outside the country uh, with Tari adventures do you do that if someone wants to go to Zanzibar are you currently able to do that or is that something that you're growing into? No, we are actually basically as seen this as a startup uh, startup company. Mm -hmm. When someone wants to travel to Zanzibar, we have all the connections, everything. If personally I can't, or maybe my team can travel to Zanzibar because, in terms of expenses sort of again, of course, yeah. Yes. So what we do because we have links with them, everything uh, we communicate with them. Eh? So the best thing that we do is only ensure that uh, our rooms are booked and we'll also do those uh, vi video video conferences everything even if we want to know how the room looks like we'll ensure that because our main focus is that we want to ensure that the client is satisfied at the end of the day okay. so what we do we always do those video conferences video mm -hmm. meetings everything so that we ensure that the facility is there because in Kenya we'll travel because the expenses are less but yes. yeah but for Zanzibar we'll actually work out and ensure that our clients are well uh, managed when, when they are there. Okay, at yes. least you save the client, uh, you know, the headache of doing the planning Correct. And, and make sure that everything is smooth when, mm -hmm. once they get there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So how did you, s let's speak about marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you market your business when it was starting and uh, as it's growing still? Okay. For marketing, the first thing that uh, we started uh, before even we went to mm -hmm. maybe working with the social media advertisements, those are the Facebook ads, everything. It was first through referrals. The other thing was through events, eh, that uh, when there is an event, you have to work out with the MC, with the planner, everything, so that you're able to introduce your product to the service, yeah. everything, yeah. So through events, even at some point, mm -hmm. we had to do some branding 
yeah, if we do some branding so that uh, we can uh, actually reach Visible. the market. Yeah. Also, we use the giveaways. Yeah, we could look maybe some hats or something. Maybe people could uh, wear them so that we mm -hmm. are, they are able to know what is this Tari Adventures. Okay. What has helped us again is the Facebook ads, mm -hmm. the advertisements, all those things, the social media thing, Instagram, everything. That has actually helped us and uh, it has actually reached quite a number of people. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, nowadays people use social media. Yes. So that is the platforms that we use and uh, that's really what's working with us. So and I can encourage anyone who wants to venture that just use that platform. Social media marketing. Yes, yes. Wow. yes. Amazing. Yeah. Have you tried, um, or at least something I see with the big uh, companies, uh, chosen travel companies, using content creators, is that something that you're open to do or is it just too expensive? Is, is there value in it from where you're sitting? Okay, for now, we'll actually we have that uh, idea of using the content creators, but you know, most of these people, they charge a lot of money, so it's quite an expense. Yeah. So we actually go on, on the line or we'll reach there, but because we don't actually want to, to go fast, too fast. Mm -hmm. We actually Moving go with, your yeah, pace. with our pace because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's a nice idea. We're actually moving to that because in terms of our marketing team, they're actually moving to that direction and everything or branding. Because when we use content creation, I know, you know how much it can cost. So and, you know, yes. <laughs> and you know, time of viewers will have that content maybe. Mm -hmm. It can go, but in terms of expenses, I can say for now, we are moving there. You're moving there, slowly <laughs> yes, we are getting working. there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Le uh, about being an entrepreneur, what is the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur? Well, being an entrepreneur is something not easy. <laughs> mm, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. Because you lack, at some point, you lack confidence. Like mm -hmm. There is lack of confidence at some point you doubt yes yes you have yourself. those fears yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing is like uh, you are not able to actually tell if this thing works because when you are coming in between the lines and decide on uh, who mm -hmm. who to reach what are your referrals what are you what are your friends so it actually makes you so your decisions, that you come up with the decisions and everything, like when you're managing your own entrepreneurship, you can you can easily give up in whatever you are doing. So the hardest thing is uh, the stressful thing. Mm -hmm. There's lack of confidence. And again, being not able to get those uh, finances uh, is the other thing that actually it's very take, take, take people and um, most of the entrepreneurs feel like, wow, this thing is so hard. Why? I can just go back to employment. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have not been forced at, into this. At the end of the day, yeah, mm. it's not working. It's not working. Wow. So you actually have to ensure that you have the policies and uh, the standards because mm. lack of that, lack of those uh, policies and standards and uh, when you want to decide what to do can actually can actually be tough yeah wow. yeah sure okay yeah. what about uh, the best thing about being an entrepreneur yeah the best thing of entrepreneurship is like uh, you have your free time like i said the work life autonomy mm -hmm. you have flexible schedules you can uh, decide what to do what to do first mm -hmm. and maybe what comes later you're, on, you're your own boss you're your own boss mm -hmm. at the end of the day but again, the best thing is that that confidence that you create at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you grow. At least you learn from experience and everything that you focus. You are not directed to like you're supposed to do this. So you actually, when you're your own boss, you, ju you just get motivated at any given point. Mm -hmm. So those are the main, main things that I see that uh, having that actually the best thing is that work life autonomy and you are the, your uh, own boss mm -hmm. those flexible schedules I know when you work with the uh, timelines or when someone is uh, <laughs> behind your neck you know it becomes uh, a really terrible thing yes and you also have to identify I mentioned to identify your why is where you are going your reasons of doing this mm 
-hmm. maybe your mistakes you have to learn from your mistakes everything that you do and uh, you get the road map of everything that you're doing you know having that to say as an entrepreneur the best thing it's like you're just bringing the plane into a safe landing eh? and wow. uh, <laughs> and you ensure that you just yeah. hit that ball over over the net and everything goes on on well so i'll actually encourage or uh, in everything that we do it's mm. uh, it's something good <laughs> being an entrepreneur it's something good <laughs> something at the good. end of the day yeah wow amazing yeah, yeah, sure. w what are the qualities or traits that you would encourage every entrepreneur to have for the qualities of an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. Stephanie, first of all, you just have to be confident. Confidence. Confidence. You've yeah. really stressed yeah, on you that. Have to, yeah, <laughs> you have to have that confidence. Mm -hmm. You actually have to be motivated at the end of the day. Have that confidence. Have the motivation. Because if you don't have the confidence, you don't have the motivation at the end of the day you can't you you can't actually manage whatever you're doing the other thing ensure that uh, you deal away with your fears stand out and ensure that uh, mm -hmm. you just have you just have to stand in between the lines because it's not an easy task yes yeah so just move move forward ensure that all those fears mm -hmm. you have you are fearless you are just confident. You just focus. There's that focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, wow. Yeah. The, the, the other thing maybe I can tell most youths what we really don't do in everything. Mm -hmm. The qualities that you need to have is that you actually need, need to know where do you stand in the, in, the, in the society, in the community. Have that, the urge that is there. You are calling. Work on it because most people are talented out there. So actually go for what go go for what you want mm -hmm. at the end of the day and actually give it a try do a road map a road test so that at the end of the day you are that confident you are that motivated and actually have the persuasiveness of doing something you know as an entrepreneur persu yeah. persuade a client that you are able to offer this service and ensure that the product is there so that whatever you are telling the client at the end of the day they like it and because we have different entrepreneurs offering the same same product mm -hmm. so actually have the persuasiveness in you and ensure that yeah. you run you run the whole system well. wow yeah, okay sure. amazing mm -hmm. as we almost conclude in this conversation yes are there some personal developments that you've seen in yourself as a result of becoming an entrepreneur Yes, Stephanie, thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually my personal development since I started uh, this, uh, this journey, I've actually mm -hmm. worked on time management. There's that time management mm -hmm. and uh, it has actually helped me. I've also grown uh, like when meeting, having that people skills uh, and ensuring that people deal differently everything i'm able to to have been able to grow my my knowledge like you just feel as an entrepreneur you just don't sit down you have to study you have to, to do research and ensure that uh, everything goes on well because without knowledge and without uh, having more skills or maybe following on to maybe the professional people who have been in, in the industry and all those guidance you will actually not grow so in terms of that time management, growing my skills, skills. growing my, my, my knowledge, everything, mm -hmm. going beyond borders. And you, you know, it has actually taught me that you should not fear. You should not fear anyone. Don't fear whatever you risk. So I'm always a risk taker. So it has actually helped me to have that courage and yeah. become more actually risk and take anything the okay. way it comes. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, sure. Would you say that your background in HR and also being an IT consultant has in any way uh, helped uh, this journey? Have you leveraged on some of the skills that you had to uh, make your business better? Yes, actually it has really helped the two like as an HR consultant. It's a wide area. So I've actually met a lot of people and uh, doing everything, it has actually taught me a lot of things. So being an HR, all those qualifications, academic, everything, it has really helped me a lot and has contributed mm -hmm. immensely to my, 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 my business. Also as an IT professional, 
academically mm -hmm. that one is also an okay thing for me because in terms of running our maybe uh, software that we use systems, all those things yes. our system it has actually mm -hmm. made steps and contributed to the success of, of my business so the two combined and uh, what i do now it's a really a hundred percent addition. So you just don't, that's why I was saying, Stephanie, that you just don't start that business without you have, you have skills and have the backgrounds, everything, mm -hmm. so, so that you get into the right space. Okay. Yes. What, uh, before you give us the final word, what is your why? Because you said you need to know your why as an entrepreneur. Yes. What is your why for Tari Adventures? For Tari Adventures, my why is that uh, I want to go beyond borders. I want to go beyond borders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will look like not a why, but I always stand and say that uh, I want to go beyond borders. Mm -hmm. I want to fit into the market yeah. and ensure that uh, we have felt and uh, we actually doing the right thing in the market. Wow. In terms of the platforms, that the reason why we exist, eh? mm -hmm. we want to have uh, a wide coverage, a wide uh, followers, and ensure that uh, what we, we do in the industry, we are generating more revenues, we are having more reviews, we are rewarding people as like, what we do, it's a re it should be a rewarding career at the end of the day. We just don't want to sit down and ensure that it's just a travel and tours company. So we just sit down. We just want to ensure that, why did I start this thing? I want to ensure that people grow. Mm -hmm. My fellow entrepreneurs grow. And we are meeting, we are doing the right thing in the market. We are actually growing our portfolio in the market, everything. And we are doing, we are having the good, good startups as when we, when someone, a client compares us with the big companies, there is no difference at the end of the day. It's a like maybe same standards, but based on the budgeting system, we want to ensure that all our clients in the market, all our visitors, wherever they can, because at some point we get, uh, we get clients from abroad, all those things. So at the end mm -hmm. of the day, we ensure that, we want to ensure that everyone feels the same because being in the industry as a, as a tarry adventures, some people maybe, or some companies can discriminate one. Or let's say like they are whites uh, coming, you handle them maybe more carefully than how you handle the local manager. So we actually, we have bridged that gap and ensure that every client is the same, provided the okay. race, everything. Yeah, so that's why we ensure that yeah. we are going beyond the borders, ensuring that we are doing everything right wow, at amazing. the end of the day. Yeah. Fine. And finally, yeah. what is that one lesson, key lesson that you would leave to an entrepreneur that you have learned through your entrepreneurship journey? You can say this and then give your social handle, that is your camera, okay. uh, where people can get you. Okay, fine. The thing that I can say to young entrepreneurs is that mm -hmm. do what you like and do what you want. And have that spirit of actually testing or doing the roadmap of what you want to do. Because most of young entrepreneurs, they just copy people and they don't run their own lens. They actually want to copy. Don't merge yourself. Don't copy mm -hmm. what someone else is doing. So do what you want. Just from the onset in everything that uh, you want to decide or uh, the urge or the spirit of maybe you are calling your motivation. So don't copy anybody mm -hmm. and just do a road test and ensure that everything will go right. Don't, uh, don't copy people because most of uh, the entrepreneurs that are failing is because of the idea that uh, they end up maybe if you are starting a salon or something, they copy, copy you, exactly. they start doing that. So at the end of the day, they do no challenges. So once you have that calling and everything, ensure that you go step by step so that at the end of the day, you'll get it right. Because if you copy someone, someone else, you will actually have it wrong at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah, wow. sure. Amazing. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, Where sure. can people find you on your social media handles? Yeah, people can find me on social media mm -hmm. on uh, Facebook and Instagram. That's where we are actually active on. For Facebook, you just type Tare Adventures, T-A-R Adventures. For Instagram, it's Tare underscore Adventures. Wow. Those are our platforms.
Thank you very much for coming on board and sharing your journey and giving insights to those who want to venture into entrepreneurship too. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me. Look forward to more. And I wish all the young entrepreneurs a success and everything in future. All is possible. All Thank right. you so much. All is possible. Thank yeah, you sure. very much uh, once again. Thank you. That has been Mr. Kurigat Kip Kirui, the CEO of Tari Adventures, talking to us about uh, you know, his journey breaking into adventure. He owns a uh, tours and travel company. Again, that is Tari Adventures. Thank you for staying on board through the conversation. Uh, we still have more coming your way. You want to stick with us all through. We take a short break and then we'll be right back. Remember, the hashtag to use is why in the morning at Y254 channel.